Hi, this is Greg Jackson for GrabJack.com, welcoming you back for another installment of Making a Game Using RPG Maker MB. This lesson is going to be brief, as there is just one specific thing I want to cover this time, and that is using events as part of map architecture. At the end of the previous lesson, we added the tiles from Tileset Page A to a newly created Page D. If you haven't already done so, I would advise you to watch Lessons 1 through 5 so we are on the same page. Just to recap, tiles on page A cannot be used as event images by default, so to be able to do that, it is necessary to create a new tile set page and put them in it. And in this lesson, we are going to use that page in conjunction with an event. If you have not done so, open the project file from where we left off. Make sure you have the throne room map loaded and that you are in event mode. Before we work our event magic, we need to modify the tile we'll be using slightly. Go into the database, select tile sets, select inside. Under the tile set palette, select page D. Click on the top left tile so that there is an X instead of a circle. This will make the tile impassable and you will see why in a moment. Click OK. Now it is time to set up our event. And just what is an event anyway? In RPG Maker MV, an event is an object that can be interacted with or is given special properties or moves around on the map. Essentially, they can be visible or invisible, the latter being used as the source of scripts governing many different background functions on a map, such as controlling cutscenes or changing certain game properties. The first thing that we need to do is hide the gap in the west wall. Right click on the tile. Click New. Double click the image box. Scroll to the bottom of the list. Select Tile Set D. Make sure that the top left tile is selected. Now click OK. Under Priority, set it to Above Characters and click OK. Just look at that. The space is now filled with a brick tile that looks just like the rest of the wall. With that tile selected, hit Control c to copy the event. Now click on the floor gap on the east wall. Hit Control v to paste the event. And there we are. We've covered both floor gaps with a wall event. If we set it up correctly, then our character will appear to walk behind the wall, but we should probably test it. Right click the floor tile just below the steps, mouse over the set starting position, and select player. Now that the game will start in the throne room, save the project. Now click the playtest button. Walk over to the northwest corner and move into the west wall. The event we set up works as intended, however you can see the very top edge of the character. That's because the character rendering overlaps the tile immediately above it, and for our going behind the wall effect to look right, we must overcome this, but that isn't all. When we move up, we are now on top of the wall, and that won't do at all. The cool thing is, we've already set up the solution to both issues. Close the playtest and return to the editor. Switch to map mode. Select tile set D. Select the top left tile, which is the one we modified earlier to make it impassable. Now draw it on the tile above both of the events we placed. You will not be able to see the difference. Now we are going to fix the issue with part of the character remaining visible. All you need to do is copy the event we created and paste it on the impassable tiles we just placed. Just so you know, you can create an event without an image and set its priority to same as characters, and that will block movement. However, you can only have one event per tile, so while that might have been a solution for the issue of being able to walk up on top of the wall, it would not have allowed us to fix the issue with part of the character showing. The last thing to do here is fix the shadow on the floor next to the wall. In map mode, switch to the shadow pen tool and extend the shadow up two tiles as seen here. Now the shadow effect shows like it normally would. The darker wall tiles indicated here serve as an indicator that there are passages to the east and the west. And that will do it for this lesson. Today we learned how to make a tile impassable, 
how to set up an event that is drawn in game above the player, and how to use the shadow pen tool. In the next lesson, we will learn how to link maps together. Thank you for watching this series. For GrebJack.com, this is Greg Jackson.